greater picture today, oh, I haven't got a name for it, it's just a pretty little scene of an Australian landscape. Up here over the colours, cobalt blue, that's uh, Windsor blue, crimson, raw sienna, a little bit of Indian yellow there, bright red, burnt sienna, viridian green or fallow green, warm yellow and of course my white. I got my gloves on so we'll start by picking up white and putting it across the top of the board. This is canvas, oh a little bit of yellow went in there so we're going to have a little bit of yellow in the sky. I'll spread it over the area of the sky. Bring your sky down low. Bring it lower than you need I'd say because you'd be tempted to keep the sky up. These scenes look much better with a lot of sky. That's the white rubbed in. I'll take a little bit of the fallow blue, put it in the corners, it's quite a big bit there. And we'll have a nice blue Australian sky. Rub it to the middle and bring it to the middle. That gives you a dark sky in the corner. Bring it down a little bit. Not too far. Down there. A bit streaky, that's okay. A little bit of crimson. And a very little bit of raw sienna. Then with a clean brush, one inch house painting brush. Yeah, 25 millimeter house painting brush. This is, a, this is sort of like a crisscross brush stroke and it blends the paint in nicely. If you go from the edge to the middle, the brush runs out of paint and that gives you a darker sky on the edge. So you can try that. You can experiment with that, the hair on there. Come off there. And you don't have to have it blended completely. Now that acrylic paint is dry here. It's getting dry because it's quite a dry day in Thailand today. So I'll add some more white. That looks good. And bring the sky down. Don't try and get it fancy or flat. Just keep it like that. And I'm adding white as I come down. Plenty of paint on the brush. And don't overbrush it. Get it on there and that's it. You'll see a little glow there of crimson, a little glow of the raw sienna here. I haven't cleaned the brush yet. There. That's a good sky. You can leave it like that. Or you can mix some grey, a little bit of blue, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of raw sienna, well, that's not raw sienna, that's burnt sienna. A little bit of raw sienna. Don't mix it completely. Just wait till it turns into that grey. You see the grey coming up now? That's rather a red grey. That'll do. Or we'll make a blue grey. There's a blue grey. Put a tiny bit on your brush. And put it somewhere in the sky where you think you might want a cloud. in there. Then pick up a lot of white on your brush and with this side of the brush, not that side, not the paint side, this side of the brush, put it onto the painting like that and just move it round. Round. Like rubbing ointment on a bruise. Round and round and round. Let's do that again here. Now don't let your cloud drop off like that. Take it up a little bit there so your eye is attracted into the picture. I want to put a little bit of dark on the bottom of that cloud and then I clean the brush. Pick up some more white and brush in the top of that cloud. So it overlaps the other cloud. Sometimes they look terrific, sometimes they don't look so good, but that looks okay to me. 
then clean the brush quite well. Don't wash it in water, you'll end up with a mess. Okay, and I'll get that brush a bit cleaner even. We'll bring it over the top of the clouds. And then the clouds will look like they're moving. Very lightly, very softly, held the brush. Hold the brush very softly, across there. Now for mountains, a little bit of blue paint, and we'll put it in where the mountains are going to be. They're going to be here. So that's the paint for your mountains in place, and it's too dark, but we'll get a shape happening, something like that. And then we'll add the white. Put some white under there. And with that, you can bring it up into where the mountain should be. Put them in there first, and then see what you've got. If you like what you've got, keep it. If not, you can change it. It's just cobalt blue and white. Now I'll put another mountain in front. Maybe like that. The rough edge looks good on the top of the mountains. It looks like little trees up there. A bit white in the bottom. And that mountain is just a little bit too dark because that's pure cobalt blue there. I'll just lighten it up a bit. But because it's in front of the other mountain, it does need to be darker than the other mountain. Like that. And the trees, on, if you were going to have trees on it, they'd be bigger of course. But I think we got it right there, that's okay. Dark spot has to go. And here, this mountain's darker again, and I've added a little bit of the grey into there. And it can come up like that. That'll do. And some white coming up into the bottom of that mountain. Just roughly in like that. bit more white there. I'll clean the brush. And with some of that grey colour and the blue, we'll put some trees in the very background. Now they're much too dark. But we'll put them on there and we'll knock the darks out. See my brush is getting paler because it's picking up this colour here. And that's what we want. A pale lot of trees way back there in the distance in front of that mountain. There. And we'll leave it like that. I'll cross the bottom of the trees out just below that line. And then a little bit of raw sienna. I'll mix it in with the white and possibly a little bit of that green, a very, very little bit of that green. We'll make a, a grey green for that very background area. Just a little bit on the brush. And that will give us just a little bit of sunlight on that tree. Not much, just a little bit of sunlight. Not a lot on those trees. Don't detail them. They're a long, long way away. We just need a suggestion of trees back there. And I'll clean the brush across underneath, right across. And that area is all grass, so let's touch it up a little bit. Rough it up just a little bit, like that. I'll clean the brush here. Clean the brush there just to get a bit of colour on there. Now we pick up a little bit of Indian yellow and a very little bit of white. Don't mix them together. They're on the brush like that. You see, they're not mixed together. I'll clean the back of the brush here and then I'll put the back of the brush on there and tilt it up as I come across. We need that straight. And we need it in the middle of the picture. Then I'll clean the brush again under here. But leave that bit there, brilliant white colour, and blend it into the greys here. And then we add our colours to the bottom of the painting. We have some yellow here. Into that we have the green and our crimson in the foreground. And greys. This is the soil you're painting actually here. The colours of the soil, we'll put foliage on top later. Don't have too bright a colours on the edges. A 
Keep your darker colours on the edges. This time it's yellow, warm yellow and white on the brush. And I'll brighten up this area in the middle. And I want it to look like we're coming uphill here towards where we are. I'll show you how we can do that easily with a fence. A few colours in like that. And for some background trees, this time I've put the raw sienna, the grey raw sienna and the darker grey on the brush at once. And I'd like a few trees about here. See the brush? And then I'll darken under the trees. And then I might be able to drag some of that light back into there. Just a couple there. Okay. And with my fan brush I'll touch up under those trees. Across here. Oh, not too big grass, just a little bit of grass. Across here. up over here a bit. Leave the bright spots. Don't spoil your bright spots. So I've mixed here, I've mixed more grey with the Cobalt blue with the crimson and the raw sienna. This one's a blue grey, this one's a red grey. It's got more red in than that, that one. Red grey, blue grey. We're going to paint some little houses in the background because they're in the background. I'll use the blue grey. Pick up a little bit on your brush, not much, just a little bit, a little brush. This is about a 3 8 brush, about an 8 mil brush. Okay, houses go about here. I remember this scene now, there's a little house here, not too close to the edge and not too far away. Let's go about there. Uh, could have been further, could have been smaller. I'll paint the roof over it. And one there. A couple of little places. And a road comes down there and sort of comes up towards us here. Like that, I unload my brush there. For the roof of the house, that's burnt sienna. We put a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue there, and a little bit of white. There, don't mix them completely. They're roughly on your brush. And the house wants to be facing into the picture. Don't paint houses painting facing out of the picture. This one will have the roof there. And this one, the roof here, because I painted too much dark there, so I'll put the roof there. Pick up a little bit more paint, we can have them nice and bright. You can put a few details, but don't try and detail it too much. If you detail it so you see every little bit of this shed, well when you get up here and paint the fence, you're going to have to see every hair on that fence. So don't detail it too much. Something like that. That little mistake there can become a chimney. And I'll put a little bright spot just here. It looks like the lights are on there today. And just a little bit of something here. So it's not so bland. And a little bit of crimson along here with the white. And that's your road there. While that's on the brush, I might as well use it and unload it here, just softly there. One brush stroke, one brush stroke, one brush stroke. Don't muck around with that. The painting knife's the best way to get those thin lines in the distance. A little bit of light on top of the roof. Just a little bit there and a little bit there. Not much. And break it up like that. Now the brush has a spot of green, yellow, that's too bright for the edge of the picture. 
We'll unload it there somewhere. Too bright. Too bright. I want to do this bit here because we're going to have a fence and this is behind the fence. So I had to add a little bit of paint there and give us something here but not bright. It's better when it's dark like that because you want them looking into the picture not looking at that bit there. You can have a little bright bit just there because that attracts the eye to the house but not off the picture. Okay that's on the other side of the fence and it goes down here something like that. Now with a very little brush, loaded with white on one side and dark on the other, that's not quite white, it's a little bluey white. We'll paint a fence in, and I want the fence to make the road look like it's coming uphill. So the fence starts way down here, down the paddock, down there somewhere. Just dots will do, dot, dot. And the fence comes across the road, down, down. Now we're coming up the hill, see? You see how it's swooping up the hill? It's just the shape of the fence. And of course the posts get much bigger when they come near you. Oh, I put dirt up there. I'm gonna clean that later. My gloves are dirty. We might have birds there. Uh, and this fence post gonna lean in to take your eye into the picture. Okay, the fence post there. And I'll put a white line down that edge. You can put a little shiny spot on the top of the fence post. Like that, always helps. There. I'll clean that off. And we'll adjust our mountains. I found a clean brush, a bit of blue paint, a bit of white paint, white brush, clean, yes, and we'll try and fix this up. There's my dirty hands, we've got yellow in there, we'll get rid of that in a minute. Clean the brush, it's a bit dry now, put the white in. Come back with the cobalt blue, tidy up our mountain. It's a bigger mountain now. A bit paler there, that's okay. And then tidy this one up. Well, we just keep that didn't happen, okay? bit more, that's better. And we can have some blue light on things down here, clean that brush. See that paint's dry. The colour's going over the top. This is a round hog bristle brush and I've stopped using them because you just can't buy them some places. I can buy them in Australia but I can't buy them in Thailand. That's a round hog bristle brush. If you do buy one, don't buy the square one, buy the one with a bit of a point on the top and then you get round foliage. The square one tends to give you square foliage. You don't see square foliage often. A bit of pretty blue in there. Okay, back to work. So, let's have some, something to fill this in. And down dark in the corner, that's better. I'll cover that over, it looks like canvas there. That's better. So that's a red purple and different colors on the other side, mainly yellows, a bit of white. We can have some foliage here because it's close to us. I'm using the red or purple. Not quite enough yellow on there. Get this foliage close here. And a lot of foliage big in the corner. Okay. A little bit more over here. And big foliage here. Good. This looks like a good sized tree brush. With lots of paint on the brush, I'll paint in a tree here. It's got to come up about there to be imbalanced. So we start there, a little line here. Oh, it's going to be a big tree. There we go. I'll put the darks in first with this tree. Sometimes I put all the colours on at once. There. And being an Australian gum tree, I've got white and red on the brush. Put it on. If it looks okay, leave it. If it doesn't look so good, we well, don't put it there again. 
And I've added some burnt sienna and some of that very dark blue to give us a butt on the bottom of the trunk. And dark bits under the tree. Now with the reddish grey on the brush, a lot of it, we'll do the other side of the tree. Let's have something like this, like this. They're the red greys. We'll block in what would be the other side of the tree. I'm taking my time with this tree. Sometimes I don't do the other side, I just do this side. Let's see what it looks like if I do it this way. So that's what's happening on the other side of the tree. And bring it over here so it comes touches there maybe. Now back to my favourite old brush. Here I'm loading all the colours on my brush. I'll load it up well. Let's have a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Don't mix them completely. That looks all right. Dark on one side, light on the other. We'll bring it over, we'll put on the tree. Now we've got to try and not follow these shapes because these shapes are on the other side of the tree. So let's give the tree go something like this. Yeah, and then out here and here. I'll load it again and the tree goes. But that one would have a bit of colour on it. There. It's obvious we want it there. Well, let's do that. And then another one over here, which disappears off the picture. But that's okay. And another one here. There. You see the other side of the tree and this side of the tree. We'll put some branches in there in a moment. And unload my brush down here, just to get rid of the paint. Then with any colour at all on your little brush, as long as it's from light to dark, we'll finish off the tree bits there. Bits and pieces here, there, everywhere. And with some lovely bright colours. Let's colour in the bottom of this trunk a little bit. Because this tree is a feature. And a few bits laying in the ground. They need to be laying flat. Stick up there maybe, or here. And as you see a lot on Australian trees, let's bring this out. Like that, a big blob of paint there. I'll leave it there, look good. And a little bit hanging down. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So that's basically the same. It's nice and bright over here and rather drab over there, so it's not balanced. I'll add a little bit of colour to the houses. Well, that's a bit of bright red, it shouldn't be in the background. I'll change it to crimson crimson, just a little bit of colour there and a little bit of white in amongst it. And this time with dark on the painting knife, I'll add wire to the fencing. There I go, I'll put dabs on there again, so I'll put dirt on my painting again. It looks like we're going to have to have a tree there. Okay, there you are tree, you can look good there. A little bit dark under the tree and another one there. That'll save fixing that up. And while you're up close here there's something wrong with this painting. You see how that white line comes along there and it stops at the fence. It's not necessary. I'd like to see your eye travel past and move on up here. So we'll have a little bit of white line there, just a little bit there. And across the other side, that white line stops at the tree. It could either stop before the tree or continue after the tree, but it shouldn't stop on the tree. Let's take it back there. Ooh, that's...
touch up the top of the house, a little white spot and a few birds just to bring your eye up and into there and I think we need some highlights here that's a bit dark here like that, something like that to give you the, the balance between the higgly piggly lights here and over here too just so it's a little bit more balanced and a few pretty colours on the road I'll sign it here on the road. Then we'll take the masking tape off. I still think those houses are too bland, so I'll add a bit of colour to their roof. And bring it forward a little bit. That's better. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That painting is 18 inches by 14 inches. It's on prepared artist canvas in acrylics. I'm sure you'll enjoy following the instructions. Now remember, there's DVDs available. There's a whole set of 70 lessons in consecutive lessons to teach you how to paint. They're like a course where you start from the beginning, you slowly learn the brush strokes and the techniques, and then you move on to the more difficult painting. So if you're really fair dinkum about learning this, as thousands of people have enjoyed the DVDs, go to my website and you'll find the DVDs available there. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.